and welcome to Dream It, Dare It, Do It, Live the Life You Want. Thank you for joining us yet again. I've got people in Texas. I've I've checked my my stats and I've got people in Texas listening to me. Hey Texas, see you. Um and today, uh, well, let me start by saying who am I? I'm Jasmine. Those of you who've been listening for the first time, I'm Jasmine. And today I am so excited because I invited Stephanie Hardwick with me. Hi, Stephanie. Hello. Thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to our conversation. Yes, we're going to have fun. And people, you need to know that Stephanie is, you'll be surprised to hear she's a coach. (laughs) <laughs> talking to someone is there a trend is there a trend here <laughs> there's a trend yes um you know we coaches we're just heart-centered people and we love to see life moving I think um anyways that's what I love to see I love to see life moving and I love to see going people I love to see people going be over like going beyond who they think they are. And um, before I say why I invited you, I would like you to just like introduce yourself to the people who are listening. Yeah. Um, Well, uh, my name is Stephanie. I've been, um, I live in the Seattle area and I have been coaching and going through um, my own process. Well, for my whole life, my own process, but I've been coaching since 2007 And um, it is absolutely the job for me. Um, I got here in a crazy way, um, went to school to do traditional therapy. And even in my program, I knew that I'm a very um, future focused individual. And it's not that I don't find the past interesting. I just find that they're um, how I like to use it is in service of what is the future that you want to create. So Um, I love to talk. I love to listen. So I've ended up in the perfect career. And one of those careers that turns around and absolutely feeds your own soul with every single conversation that you have. It's like you create this space where something bigger than the both of you shows up. And, you know, I try and get out of the way, but I'm listening to everything that comes out of my mouth and comes out of clients' mouths. And I've just absolutely I'm in the career of a lifetime, one that I never intend to retire from. You know, when I'm talking to, to clients also, I get, I get that. I, I have, I, I have a girlfriend that I, that we talk to, like we do, we have this coaching friend relationship kind of thing going, you know, and I have multiple friends like that, actually. Yeah. Coaches and, make the best friends, by the way, yeah. <laughs> for me personally. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. And then she's like, you know, whenever, cause I share, you know, whatever I'm seeing and they're like, oh, and I'm like looking for it for me. And then they see something for themselves. And, and then, so when we're listening, we're actually seeing something for ourselves too. So like, it's just like, it's such a, an expansive conversation, you know, it's not restrictive. Yeah. You don't feel like you get stuck in it. It's just like you, you get out and you're just wide open. It's like the ultimate curriculum, the never ending course on waking up. And yeah, there is no room to get bored, I think, in this life and certainly not in this career that supports this life because the content is always changing and it's you get to see more and more and more every time. Yeah. Yeah. And so the like everybody who's listening and and knows what I love to do is, you know, my podcast is called dream it, dare it, do it, live the life you want. And, you know, this year I've been past, I should say in the past in the past year, I've been really, really working with people and helping them to live the life that they want. Not, not the life that they think they should live, not the life that the, their husband or wife or mother or brother or, you know, or the population or the society, like, you know, just the life that they want to live. And, you know, I love that, um, you know, we, we had a chat. So, so Stephanie and I are working together and we're working together because she's, she did something. She went beyond. She, <laughs> she just, jumped 
so like in the dream it, dare it, do it version, I think that, you know, Stephanie dared and, and she's just got more out of that than she even thought was possible. So I'm working with Stephanie, not as a coach. She doesn't need me as a coach. She needs me as a a doer. <laughs> she needs me to get my butt onto YouTube is what she's trying to say. Because I'm ready to launch in that area. And I love that she's already pre-thought stuff out. So yes, that's that's what we're doing together. <laughs> so so can you share with the people who are listening, you know, what happened? Like, like was it first of all, first of all, let's tell them what the heck I'm talking about. Cause you know, I'm like in hiding. <laughs> Yeah, well, so um, a couple of years ago now, um, I started developing a bit of a passion, which is, I think, not normal. Well, it's not, that's not fair to say. It surprised me. It was not it's what not I expected. Common. It is not, not common. common. As a, a 51-year-old Seattleite uh, woman who has always loved music, um, I found myself diving into the world of K-pop or Korean pop music. And uh, it just so happened, right? A pandemic was happening and uh, we were all slowing down and I really got time to do a deep dive into this music, the lyrics, uh, its history. And I'm still new at it because it's only been like two, I think solidly two years since I really got into the the circle of all of this. And I just developed such a love for it and such a passion. And I was actually using it to kind of keep me in a good vibe and a, and a good feeling in order for me to do this um, job of coaching clients who honestly were struggling with a lot of the same conditions that I was, you know, going through a pandemic. Um, at that point, the government um, was not, uh, according to my preference, you know, we had a Trump presidency that I found um, to be very upsetting. And um I just started using it. And so, and at one point I decided to take what I do, which is my passion for mental health and what does it mean to have well-being and, and joy and peace. And, and I started uh, going out onto TikTok, which was the social medium that I used and talked about um, a, one group in particular, which is BTS. Um, you can Google them. They're everywhere. And talking about how BTS um, things that they do are good for your mental health. And I um, started a hashtag on, on TikTok and it's really grown and that account has grown and it's, it's sizable for me. I think in the world of TikTok, it's still a very medium to small account, but with like about, I think I'm almost at like 75,000 followers now. Um, I'm getting to have a real conversation with people who wouldn't necessarily access my coaching content and I'm just giving it away for free. And, um, each, you know, most of my content is 60 seconds. I have 60 seconds to make my point. Um, but I, I use K-pop or BTS in general uh, to bring just kind of new ideas and a new way to see things about our true nature and peace and happiness and joy and um, how it can be good for your mental health. Mm. So, so like the, the, the results, the, what came out of this just surprised you. Well, right. Because it started with, um, you know, one, I have two teenagers and I didn't know how to use TikTok. So <laughs> I actually had to have a lesson on this is how you use TikTok. And I, I, you know, it's a very fun app. If you, if you get at the algorithm to, to meet your preferences, it's actually can be just this very locked down blissful thing that you look at. And I, I was thinking about being brave enough to create content there. And I'd done a few things. I'd done some edits, but not my face. And then kind of at one point, it was after BTS um, was nominated for a Grammy. And then they did not win the award with given their numbers and the influence that they have it was pretty shocking. And I just saw a lot of fans getting upset about it. And I just had this nudge that defied all common sense. I'd just gotten off of my Peloton. I was a sweaty mess, but I saw people getting un upset unnecessarily or around them not winning the award. And I just kind of made a positive oriented video. And then that's the first time my account really spiked. Because originally when I got onto TikTok, I had said, I will only make a video if I get six six hearts or six likes. If I get the minimum of six, if six people 
watch it and like it, I will make another one. And that was the minimum. That was your, that was your gauge. That was my gauge. And I, it went from, you know, six to a hundred to a couple hundred. And now, you know, my goodness, some of them have had, I think, I don't know how many views, 500,000 views. Um, so it's just been such a joy. That's kind of how it took off. And I, I had that creating in that way through the pandemic has been just such an absolute blissful joy of mine. I've enjoyed it a hundred percent. I'm still going. Yeah. Yeah. When, when we first chatted, my dog wants to come and see you. Come on. Baby. Great. It's because we're talking about BTS. Your there dog you is also excited about the content. <laughs> so everyone, this is Bote. Those of you who are listening on video, this is Bote. Um, so what's, what, do you like, you know, so, like some people would have just stopped, like would not have done that. Like, what is it that you've done that you could suggest? Like, I'm sure that there are people out there that are passionate about something, right? They're passionate about something, but they've got this thinking that they shouldn't, or they're, they're thinking about why they shouldn't. Like they, they've gathered all the proof and the good reasons why they shouldn't do something. Right. What would you suggest to them? Well, I think it's looking at the desire itself and not putting a lot of thought onto it. Right. I think it's really easy to get very practical about creative bursts in such a way that it's like, you know, looking your finger and thumb over a candle wick and just it will put out that beautiful flame of creative desire because it hits the intellect and then we, you know, henpeck it to death and it doesn't go anywhere where if you just go with the possibility or what it is that you're wanting to create, like for instance, mine was, I just wanted to create a new way of looking at something to end suffering. Right. I mean, and that's really the whole basis of all of my content is help people wake up to their true nature that the intellect gets in the way and you know, how to identify more with your inner being and less with your ideas about who you think you are. And, and so that allowed me to, my camera was even crappy. Like if you go back to my original videos, like they're poor quality, the lighting is bad. I actually look about 10 years older than I actually am. <laughs> I've gotten so much better now. <laughs> um, but it was because it just, I certainly had it because you're recording, right? So from the get-go, you're looking at your own face and I could feel my ego going to town. Like one, that you're way too old to be talking in this space. What the hell are you doing? You're too old for TikTok. Um, this doesn't make any sense, but I was just enjoying it. And I went with that, just that first impulse was just, I enjoy this and I want to be of service. And I love transformation, by the way. I love sharing what people have forgotten about themselves. So it just seemed to, that was the only thing I paid attention to. And everything else was like, well, let's see if I'm too old for TikTok. My comment section will tell. And even then, if I, and believe me, I had the people come at me like, you're too old to be hanging out with, you know, BTS. And you did get a, but it was funny how it was an immediate delete and block and it didn't stop me because the ratios were like truly point. 0.5% of my comments are negative. If even that, it's just mm -hmm. so few, but um, I, think I just didn't let it get in my way. There's just so many good people out there. I mean, there's like, there's way more good people out Correct. there than there are bad. There is know? much more kindness than there is cruelty. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I think that the only thing that it's so funny because I, I, our friend, Anna Scott, yeah, is talking about kindness. And she just did a podcast with Dickon. And uh, that's what they were talking about. They were talking about, you know, when you don't have so much on your mind, kindness, kindness just comes up naturally. It's a natural, right. it's a natural way of being that we have as human beings. It's kindness, right? right. And then when we're not kind, it's because we're in our intellect. We're either, you know, debating you know, we, we either made something right, made something wrong, and then we're defending the right or the wrong. And, but that's not, that doesn't give us the good feeling, you know, and I think that the good feelings 
are spiritual. They're not intellectual. So when we have this feeling, this, yeah, let's do it. Like, you know, when, when you and I first talked and you were like, I would like to do this. I was like, okay, let's go. Let's do it. You know, it was just like, it was like, I have, it's not like I, I have major plans, you know, like, I know we're going to figure it out. Let's go. Let's, let's do it. And that's how I, I go about in life. And it's so funny because, you know, when we first started, you, you asked me, do you have a, uh, do you choose, how do you choose your guests? You know, and, and I, this is my third season and I've struggled like the first two seasons. Cause I was like, okay, I have to find good reasons why I'm inviting people. But the fact of the matter is I actually have no reasons. There's no intellectual reason is I meet somebody. I feel a click. I love the energy. And I'm like, let's have a chat. And I love doing that I, because it's just so expansive. Right. I mean, if each person expressing their own internal unlimited creator, right, I think is infinitely interesting and in, infinitely exciting because our whole lives is an act of creation. So, I mean, really, you could talk to absolutely anybody. <laughs> right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, we don't need to talk to get like, and I remember a time, you know, I do remember a time where I had prejudice and I had, you know, I I had to like you to talk to you. And I'm like, but uh, who decides like it just it just happens naturally. Like, you know, like I actually like everybody. I literally do like everybody pretty much instantaneously, just like pets. Just like, you know, animals, I, I just do. And right. the only reasons why I don't is because I've got, you know, something coming up in my intellect. That's telling right. me why I shouldn't. Right. Yeah. I often have gotten asked like around my coaching practice, like, how do you sit with all those people and listen to all their, their problems? And, and have you ever had any clients that you don't like? And it's so funny because there's something, because it's, I think I've been in practice now. I don't remember how many of the years that is. It's like, uh, I don't know, 14 years or something. And it's been very rare. I mean, I can think maybe two that just glanced off. Like we just weren't a, a match. And because you do, you fall in love with every single client because when you're in that universal space where you're moving beyond the psychology and you're looking to the spiritual nature of every person, then there's just nothing but love. And I did, I was like, I wondered if like, I fall in love with every single one of my clients and they're from every walk of life. Cause I, you know, people niche down in their coaching. And for me, it's been like, look, if you have a life, I'll coach you. Cause it really doesn't matter to me, the content, we're going to get to the universal principles of life anyway. And so however you come to me, it doesn't matter. And, um, it is interesting. You get outside that thinking and then I could see the brilliance in, in everybody and I because I could see what was getting in their way and right right there is just automatic love affection kindness connection with every single one yeah it's hard to market right it's hard to market though eh like when you want to market who, who are your clients people these these are people <laughs> I know. And honestly it's like um yeah and, and that's why I think my marketing I've done I've had a very successful practice and I have done very little traditional marketing. I'm trying to think if any, I think I, I farted around with like some Google ads at one point, yeah. but in that I, it, it's really just going and being of service. And that's how the clients come. And most recently getting on talk, TikTok and talking about BTS has actually brought in work and talk about alignment. When I have a client that is a BTS fan, at the same time, no matter what we're talking about, it's bliss. <laughs> it's just bliss. And that is the thing I never, what I love is, is how life can surprise you. I never even thought that that would be a thing. Like I and actually thought it would hurt my business if I became discovered because I was quite anonymous for a while until people said, hey, where's your website? And I'm like, Ugh, like I didn't want to put it on. And then I finally did. And it's been, it's been fabulous. I'm so glad that I did. Cause I never would have thought it could be work enhancing. 
Yeah, it's very cool. I think it's I, I think it's very cool. I love your energy. I love I love that you love it. That's, you know, like, I have no idea who they are. Sorry. I have no get idea. Get on that, Jasmine. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to get on that, eh? Um, no, uh, obviously now I know, but when I met you, I didn't know, right? Right. Um, but I just loved that you loved it. Like, there is just, I love the passion. I love the fun about it, you know? And I have been lately really noticing that I love fun. I love joy. And I love excitement and I love making things happen. Yeah. You know, I'm like, okay, so what do you want? Okay, let's do it. You know, yeah. and I've been, I've been working with clients lately and that's what we've been doing. We've just make, been making thing hap- things happen. Like, what do you want? YouTube channel? Okay, let's go do a YouTube channel. You want a website? Okay, let's go do a website. You want social media? Okay, let's go do, you know, so like yeah. it didn't matter. Like for me, it's business, you know, when it comes to, you know, making your business run the way that you want it to run. I love that. Like, I, I'm just like, I love to automate stuff and like, make sure that you've got, you know, your time management is down and you're organized and you've got solid structure and foundation. And I just love doing that. You know? Yeah. Well, and I love that, that what I hear in that too, is the honoring of feeling good, right? I think when something comes along in our life, like for me, it was definitely enjoying talking about BTS and talking about all the good aspects of them and just going with it because it feels good. I mean, absolutely. My ego was questioning, what the hell am I doing? Why do I love this so much? And all of that was just useless because it would get in the way of the fact that I did just love it so much. And so if you allow yourself to feel good and decide to know nothing about it, because I think the ego goes crazy. Where is this going? Why am I doing this? What are the outcomes here? As opposed to just doing something because it feels good to do it and, and watch life. That's what I've loved about all of this. Just watch life surprise you. And like, so here, I mean, there were some major surprises that came. One, I got uh, contacted by um, Vogue magazine out of Singapore And they were doing an article on BTS and the gal followed my TikToks and said, I was wondering if you would be our expert author for, for this article. Like I got to be in Vogue magazine (laughs) and the article came out and it was so awesome. And then um, most recently I've got contacted by a company in Indonesia that it's a tech company and they do a day of like self-care for their employees. And I get to talk about loving yourself. Um, in an organization because their HR person follows my TikTok account. And um, what bliss, like I get to talk for an hour and a half in a professional setting about loving yourself. Like what? I mean, so fantastic. And these surprises just keep coming. Very, very cool. Well, guys, now do you understand why I invited Stephanie? (laughs) (laughs) It's been, you know, there's so much learning to be had, everything from, you know, getting serious, because that was the other thing. Oh, this was a part I learned so much. Like, okay, so if you go out and you Google how to be successful on TikTok, you will get all these YouTube videos, by the way, on these are the top eight things that you need to do to grow your following. Now, I was already seeing success. So I, I Googled these things. And they all felt like, like, you know, you should have all these videos in the bank. Well, truly my TikTok account is I do it when I feel it. I tried to do it as like, okay, I'm going to do one a day and I'm going to put the extra ones in the bank and I couldn't feel more flat. And so that just simply doesn't work for me. And then there's like, make sure you start each one with a hook. Well, I didn't want to do that. (laughs) So I didn't do any of the things that they recommend doing and it's been just fine and it's grown. And and that way I've also honored doing it when I feel like it, because otherwise this thing that was such a joy project was going to become a burden. If there was a have to like, or if I have to do it a way other than how I'm feeling. And it's been great lesson for me of not buying into what the world says has to, like it has to go this way or else you're not going to succeed. Now it doesn't mean I might've gone faster or more, but I know I wouldn't have enjoyed the journey as much as I have if I wasn't just listening to me, which was like, if I don't feel it that day, I don't feel it. But there'd be like, so like 
truly how I do my content is so random. I'll like go to the uh, Spotify. I have all of their songs in one playlist. I'll just hit shuffle play and I'll listen to a song and, and I'll think, okay, does something come to me about that song that I could talk about? And most of the time it does just because their content is so very easy to pull good mental health and good emotional nutrition out of their work. But um, and then there's other times where um, they'll just say something or do something in some of their reality stuff that they do. And, and I can, and I just get inspired and I just do it. And that's it. That's how I've, I've done it. Not, not with any forethought or strategy, I guess I would say that wasn't based in a real strong desire just to create. Yeah. Listen, if it, if it's, if it makes you gag, like chances are it's not going to work for you. <laughs> Right. You do know, you ever just like realize how much stuff we make ourselves do that we don't want to do? Yeah. Yeah. Like I look like lately, see, like right now, what I do, I do is I help, you know, solopreneurs and small and me- medium business owners. And they're like, okay, well, I've Googled how to do a website now. So let's do it like this. And I'm like, okay, well, do you want to do it like that? You know, it, it sounds like a lot of work. Yeah. Okay. Well, so what do you want to do? What do you actually want to do? Forget what you've learned. Forget what, you know, all the experts are saying. Like you've heard what the experts are saying. Out of that, is there anything that speaks to you? And if it doesn't, what does? Yeah. You know, like, so it's just like we, I'm the, I look at YouTube videos and I'm the same, you know, like I, I subscribe to channels. By the way, people get ready. You're going to go subscribe to K-pop fix uh, very soon. Uh, <laughs> just yes. like a little plug in there. Um, but, you know, like I, I hate it when I receive a notification and there's this, the subject or like it's something and I'm like, oh, I want to, I'm interested, you know, like I, I, and then I look and it has nothing to do with it. Like, you know, like they just wrote something and then when that happens I feel like I'm a dumbass sure like you've been manipulated in some way yeah exactly so it's like you know what if you don't want to manipulate don't do it I mean right just don't do your thing and it's gonna it's a really big revelation I think to live your life not making yourself do things that you don't want to do and I, you know, it's funny, I'll get pushback on that with clients. We're like, well, isn't that just life? Yeah. But there is something about when we start honoring our preferences. Um, it's amazing how much we'll inconvenience ourselves for the sake of a passion. Right? Like, for instance, I have a, I have a, a new camera you know, that, uh, I probably didn't want to buy it or, you know, like, it's not like I have a passion for, for new cameras or whatever, but I'm so excited for this project. I'm willing to go out and fork out all this money. It's like, all of a sudden you become willing to do things that you probably wouldn't naturally choose because that passion is there. And there's a difference there between taking like inspired action versus making yourself do something that you don't want to do. Because when we're in the way of that passion or that wisdom, Uh, George Pransky, a a teacher who I love and follow, was the first one that said this out loud. And I loved it Uh, in a room I was in with him. He said, you know, human beings are self-implementing. You know, I'm a coach, right? So half the time people are like, I want accountability. And now I don't even do accountability because of that very moment. Because what we're looking for in life, I think, is that sweet spot where we see something or a preference so powerfully that we're going to naturally self-implement and that we don't have to make ourselves with an accountability system go do something and I love that right so don't make yourself do things that you don't want to do let's see something so powerfully that you hit the sweet spot of self-implementation and I I love that I um it it's funny what you're about what you're saying I'm I'm right now I'm working on a project with uh, an, another coach and it's um we've called it lighten up it's all made up and it's so true. A, a whole new approach to weight loss oh nice that's and, so good right so we're looking at 
you know, like both of us all our lives have been looking at, you know, losing weight and, and how it was a problem, you know, that we were the size that we were and, and all of this, right? And what we, as we're discussing it, you know, we're seeing, because like, okay, so she's been successful, right? She's lost a hundred pounds twice. That's <laughs> right? double successful. Yeah, Excellent. that's double successful. So uh, un unfortunately she had gained it back. But I mean, what she saw out of that was like, when, when there's something wrong with you, when you're doing something because there's something wrong, it's not sustainable. Like you're on top, you're trying to fix yourself when you've got nothing to fix. Right. Right. So when you're coming from this love, this, this excitement, this joy, it's a different energy and that is sustainable. Right. That you can hold on to that. You can ride the horse, you know, as long as you want. But when, when there's a problem with you, it's not sustainable. It's inevitable. You're going to say, fuck it. Yeah. It's inevitable. It's like, such a huge piece to wake up to the fact that we're not broken, right? I mean, I, um, I love there's a teacher, Bill Pettit, right? He talks about nothing broken, nothing lacking. Um, it's, I, I think somebody, I'm sure other people say that too. It's just he was the one that I really heard drive the... The yeah, point yeah, home. On, I, I was with him this afternoon, actually, with Bill. Oh, were you? Yeah, because he's doing a he's doing a master class right right now um, about um, thriving together, and that's what we're doing. We're we're and and on his website, that's what he have he has nothing nothing broken, nothing lacking. Yeah, nothing broken, nothing lacking, and really, and I love what I, it's like. Instead of having that just being a good idea to think about. But really looking for, you know, yourself so that and I looked for myself because otherwise I just like kept it as a really good idea. It's a good concept to hold to help me think positively about people, which is kind of helpful, but it's completely different than really knowing that. And, you know, for myself as a practitioner, when I finally dropped in to that and that knowing that understanding that grounded nature started to have a transformative quality towards my clients like I've never had before, right? Because they'd come in, let's say, with trauma. And I could actually get a little bit like up in my you know, chest about like, oh, God, how am I? I don't know what to do here versus if I know that we are built and designed to handle trauma. There's a steadiness to approaching any situation that is transformative in and of itself before we even take a look in that direction. And, and, you know, for myself as well, like I actually thought I was a high functioning depressive, much like, um, yeah, Michael Neal has a very similar story to me where I just thought I was broken. So therefore, because I am uh, hardwired for depression, then I have to meditate every day. I have to read inspiration every day, journal and exercise. And then God forbid, I wake up in a low mood. I got to double down on all those practices. And I was busy with that, like time, like imagining, you know, you have, you wake up in a low mood and you're like, oh crap, I got to do two hours of self work in order to, you know, and it's not that that wasn't effective. I mean, I definitely was a kick-ass coach. I could talk about things that you got to do in order to keep yourself maintained, but um, it was a lot of hard work versus, oh, I can trust yeah. my true nature, not be disturbed or take serious moods that come through the mind and I'm okay. And just even that knowing changed the whole, the whole playing field. Yeah. And now I meditate when I want to, not because I need to, which is freedom. Yeah, I was into empowerment. Oh, yeah. I'm empowered. And, you know, I had to take weeks off <laughs> of my empowerment. I was just like, okay, it's tiring. I'm tired right now <laughs> from saying I'm strong. I can do it. I'm empowered. Uh, so I just, you know, closed the phone and just watch TV for weeks just to freaking recuperate from my empowerment. Empowerment. You know? <laughs> That's so great. But now it's like, I'm like, I'm running. I'm like, just it there. Cause there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong. So the day is the day, how the day is. Right. 
right? So, yeah. okay, so today I did that. And it's so funny that you're, you were talking about how you, you got the stillness because I had an event that happened for me too, like sometime in the past few months where, you know, I, I got up in my head because I was, you know, this person that was asking for my services, like they were somebody big and I wanted to work with them. And then I was like, okay, how am I going to make them? And I was like, like, I was trying to figure out up in my head, you know, how am I, what words am I going to say to, you know, get this job, right? Right. And then I started talking with this person and the words that came in my head were, and they're not in my head, actually, they came from within. They said, he, he doesn't need you. Mm. And then I was just like, so mad. <laughs> damn it. I want him to need me. And then I went to bed and I was like, how can I still get this job? You know? And then the next call, I was just clear, you know, I was just like, it just doesn't need me. You know, it's like, you don't need me. Let me talk to this person and he'll take care of it. He's like, really? And I'm like, yeah. So I'm like, yeah. he wants this. You good? He's like, yeah. Okay. Right. <laughs> it was all taken care of. And, but I, you know, I felt so good about that. I, right. I actually thinking, oh man, I lost the job. It wasn't even that. It was like, ah, oh, I didn't do, I didn't manipulate. I didn't, you know, try to control the situation. I just let it be. And I'm in good relations with these people and yeah. they're referring people to me, you know, nice. it's like, do you know? So it's like, listen to your heart. Don't try to manipulate stuff and just stay in the moment. And yeah. if, if you go, don't do it. <laughs> right. I think that there is that aversion, right? There's a, you know, cause usually then we turn that into a should, right. And I love that. I love that word because it's such a precious indicator of resistance, right? If you use the word should something in you is resistance. And it doesn't mean that you don't go with that thing. Like I always joke about the dentist. I'll go victim to the dentist appointment that I created all the time. Like, oh, I should go to the dentist. Well, if I really slow down, I want to have all the teeth in my head to the best of my ability, right? So I do want to go to the dentist. So it's no longer a should. But then other times, like if you really listen to a should, you know, like, oh, I should have videos in the bank for TikTok. Like, that's not what I want to do. And, and so really allowing the voice of preference, because I think that's the only way that like our inner creators talks to us is through our desires. And that should is the very first indicator that there is something within you that is in resistance and slow down and take a look. All right, people. If you, you, you should nothing. <laughs> right. You should nothing. So you good. Nothing. Right. Well, Stephanie, thank you so much for accepting my invitation. Thank you for having me. It was super fun. I love not even know what we were going to talk about. So yay. <laughs> there you go. See, that's what we do. <laughs> so if people want to, well, first of all, if they want to go see your TikTok, what's the address and what's your website? Yeah. So um, you could just look the easiest way is just do hashtag BTS is good for mental health. It's all one word. That hashtag will take you to my account, which is I underscore have underscore no underscore think. And that's an inside joke with BTS. I have no think. Um, it's just hard to sell. Right. So that hashtag will take you. You'll see my face all over it. Um, the other way is um, for, you know, coaching, you can go to stephaniehardwick.com. Um, and the other um, website I have is thrivewithwealth.com, where I work with high net worth families who are struggling with navigating what the kind of complications that high net worth can bring and how to have wealth transition conversations from generation to generation or in relationship. Um, so those are the ways. And soon to come, K-Pop Fix on YouTube, yes. you will be able to find how not just BTS, but all of uh, K-Pop pulling out the good nutrition and what they have to say. And it's good for your mental health. Fantastic. Well, thank you very, very much again. I really enjoyed our conversation. And mm -hmm. uh, to everybody who's listening, I'm going to say, dream it, dare it, do it, live the life you want and have a good one. Bye.
<laughs> Bye. Bye.